So in the previous video, we talked about a basic form of self-attention. Now we are going to get a little bit more sophisticated and talk about the self-attention mechanism that is used in the attention is all you need paper. So yeah, just to recap, this is what we looked at, at the, in the previous video where we had the self-attention mechanism defined as follows, where we had this input sequence, which were embeddings, word embeddings. Then we computed the dot products here between one particular input and all the other inputs. And then yeah, we normalized those with a softmax and computed the output as the attention weighted inputs. So for each input, for each input AI, we will get a vector. And if we have, let's say T words, we will get T vectors. So from one to T essentially a matrix, tension matrix. Okay, but yeah, we are go now kind of extending this concept of this basic attention using the attention that is used in the paper, attention is all you need. So how does that one look like? So first of all, notice that there was one big problem with the basic version of self-attention. And the problem was that it did not involve any learnable parameters. So the previous version of self-attention, the basic form, was actually not very useful for learning a language model because how do we update this, right? So if we want to develop a language model that is, for instance, supposed to translate text, how do we make it better if there are no learnable parameters, right? So here we are now introducing three trainable weight matrices that are multiplied with the input sequence embeddings, the XIs that we had before. So now instead of, let me go back, so instead of just computing this dot product here between the input and the query, we now involve weight matrices. In fact, we will use three different types of weight matrices. We call the one um, WQ, which corresponds to the query, K for the key, and V for the value. So when we now compute this matrix multiplication between word, the word embedding xi, which is a vector, and this matrix wq, we get the so-called query. For this one, we get the so-called key. So these are vectors. And the value is also a vector. This is the value between a matrix wv and the input xi. So what's new is now that we have modified versions of this word embedding. And these are weight matrices that can be updated with backpropagation, for instance. So here's a drawing of how this self-attention mechanism looks like for a particular input. So let's consider the one in the middle here, x2, word, um, the second word in the sentence. So this current, we can consider this as the current input. We call this the current query. So, I mean, query is a little bit ambiguous because we, has, we also have the Q here, but let's consider this as our current input here. And we compute these three things that I showed you on the previous slide by matrix multiplication. So if I go back, it's just a matrix multiplication to compute these three things. And we do this actually for all the inputs. So we also do this here and here. So from word one, two, up to the last word, the teeth word. Now, we are also computing the attention values here as a dot product. However, here we are now computing it, instead of computing it between the sequences, um, x1 and x, um, let's say, i, instead of computing it like this, we compute it actually between the query and the key. So these are just modified versions of that. So here we are regarding Q2 as the current input. So we are using Q2 here everywhere. This is our query. And then we use the key. So maybe I should use different colors. So for the blue one here, we use blue key. For the green one here for itself, we use green one. And for this one, we use this one. But this query is all the same. The keys are different, but the queries are, are the same. So why the terms query, key, and value? This, I think, comes from 
uh, the field of databases. So here it's not really that relevant. It's just different, yeah, different names for different parts of this computation here. And you can, yeah, think of this. Um, this is also known as this dot product here is multiplicative attention. There's also the other types of attention like additive attention, but here it's like a form of, um, yeah, a form of multiplicative attention. And essentially for each query, for each here, for each query, the model learns which key value input it should attend to. So continuing with this model here, when we computed these, there's also a normalization via the softmax. And then these are added up to form this A2, which is um, the context aware embedding of the input. So if I go back, this is similar essentially to what happens here, right? So when we have our context aware embedding of the input XI, now we have the same thing, except the computation is a little bit fancier because we involve these three matrices. I will also show you, I mean, there's also a scaled version of that, but one step at a time. So here is the not scaled version. So here in the center, we have again a softmax. So the softmax of these um, dot products, so that these attention weights, these A's sum up to one, just like before. And then what's new is we multiply this here by the value. So we do that for all the T values. So we are summing over them here. This will be a vector. So this will be the vector uh, for the second word, A2 corresponding to X2. We would do the same thing also for X1 and XT, so up to XT. So we would repeat this process, but we would each time swap the query then by, let's say query one, the first word, and then also the teeth word and so forth. But notice also what's cool about this is we could do this all in parallel. There's no sequential nature of that. So we could all compute these in parallel. Yeah, to explain a little bit better what was going on in the previous slide, I made a copy of the previous slide and added some annotation about the different dimensions of the different parts in that figure. So let's walk through this from left to right. So here, xi, uh, x1, this is a word, a word embedding vector. So you can think of it as a one times de dimensional matrix or de dimensional vector, where de is yeah the embedding size. In the original attention is all you need paper. They used 512 as the embedding size, but of course, this is a hyperparameter. It's something you can choose. It's arbitrary in that way. Um, you can have 256 or 1024 or some other number as the word embedding size, as we have seen also when we worked with RNNs. Um, then we have our matrices here, our Ws, the query key and value. And they have, have to have, of course, the same dimension, I mean, the same number of rows as we have columns here for the matrix multiplication. So we have DE here everywhere. And then the output size or the number of columns is DV, DQ, and DK. And in the original paper, they had DQ equaling DK. I mean, of course, that's also necessary for the dot product here, right? You have to match the dimensions. And in the original transform paper, they also had DQ equal to DV. So um, this is, yeah, we'll see later why that is. It's because we have also um, yeah, certain stacking going on and things like that. So that's um, determining our output size. Mm. Okay, um, what else? Yeah, so these will be, of course, scalars, these dot products, right? Because it's a multiplication between two vectors. So our softmax here, this will give us our, essentially our scaled attention weight that we then multiply by this value vector, which is a one times um, dv dimensional vector. And then we sum that up. So the output size of this one would be one times dv. So that's, yeah, just annotated what, what these parts are. Now you know what is the vector and what's the matrix 
that wasn't clear before, but yeah, this is, I think, maybe just a, another summary of the previous slide. Um, here's an example of these attention visualizations. So again, this one here is just for one, one word, right? So this is just for the second word. So it's attention vector for the second word. So in the previous slide we had looked at the second word as the input, but of course we have also other words in the input. So we would repeat this whole process for every input element. So here on the left hand side, we consider the first word and here on the right hand side, we consider the last word, whereas here we consider the second word. But this uh, might be a misleading uh, visualization. It looks like there's a sequential part to it. That's not true. All of these can be computed in parallel. So we don't have to wait for one to finish before we can compute the next. So these are all parallel computations, which is one nice aspect about these transformer models or the self-attention mechanism in the transformer model. And then, so we get an attention aware embedding for each of the words. And then these essentially, you can think of it as a matrix, you now an attention matrix where each row corresponds to, yeah, to the embedding, attention embedding for each word. So it should, if we have a T here, this should actually be a T. Okay. Um, yeah, and here's just like, uh, more like compact notation for that. So now consider for the inputs, we represent the inputs as a T times DE dimensional matrix, where DE is our embedding size again, and T is the input sequence size. So I'm just summarizing everything here in the center. So now, instead of doing these steps individually here, I can just write this as one matrix uh, multiplication. So we now have, let's say, the matrix Q. So we, instead of having Q1 here, Q1, Q1, and so forth. So these results, we can just summarize that as um, a matrix, a T times DQ dimensional matrix, K times uh, T times DK and T times DB. And then we can compute this attention matrix, which is a T times T dimensional matrix. So this is one, maybe one disadvantage of the self-attention approach is that this is kind of large if you have a large input sequence because yeah it's like a pairwise in a way a pairwise uh, similarity score here so it's um, n squared uh, or t squared uh, the big o of that so it's not the most i would say memory efficient approach but well at least we can compute things in parallel so we have now kindly a kind of slightly modified version of the dot product that I showed you before. We call that the scaled dot product, which is because of this one. I will explain that in the next slide. Um, just focusing again on this whole thing here. So now we have Q times K as a matrix multiplication. Then we take the softmax. So we have Q times T, uh, Q, Q times K as the matrix multiplication. Then we have this scaling here. I will talk about it in the next slide, as I said. And then we have the softmax, and then we multiply by the matrix V. So this is just the more compact form of what I've shown you on the previous slides. And then we will get this T times DV uh, dimensional attention matrix. Okay, so what is this um, scaling factor here in the denominator? So this is just to prevent these individual dot products. So if you do a matrix multiplication, you can also think of it as multiple dot products between these Q and Ks. So to prevent these to become too large, we scale them because if you think of the softmax function, if you have a very negative input to the softmax function, it will be zero. If you have a very large input, a very positive large input, it will be close to one in the softmax. So in order to prevent a very sharp distribution of values in the softmax, we have this scaling factor because if you maybe just think back of the logistic sigmoid, which is essentially similar to the softmax, um, except that softmax incorporates all the other ones, but it's kind of like a sigmoidal thing. If you have values close to one, close to zero, there's like this saturation, right? So you want to prevent values from being too extreme. I mean, the same 
concept. This is of course not a softmax, but the same co uh, concept applies to the softmax. So by scaling, we prevent the softmax from having a distribution that is too sharp. Um, yeah, and here, just for reference, is the visualization of the scaled dot product extension from the attention is all you need paper. So here again, they're just summarizing summarizing that visually. The matrix multiplication, then the scaling here. Um, optional mask. Um, we will talk about the mask later when we talk about the transformer. Here in these steps, there is no masks. Um, so a transformer also consists of an encoder and a decoder, and the decoder has a mask. So here, you can actually ignore it. And then we have the softmax, and then we have a matrix multiplication with V. So this is essentially summarizing this one. Okay, yeah, okay, this was um, self-attention and the scaled dot product attention. In the next video, I will talk about the multi-head attention. And then we will be one step closer to the transform model.